Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable episode, we have the part two of Josh Kalinowski. Now, or otherwise is known as JK. If you haven't listened to the part one Roundtable episode with Josh as you're interviewing him, do yourself a favor, stop listening to this, go to part one. But in case you're like, oh, I'm, you know, you're the kind of person that like, likes to read the, the ending of a book and then go to read the beginning to give you some color and some background about Josh. Having overcome failure and broken dreams, Josh knows how hard it is to become your best when it feels like the whole world is against you. As the CEO of eight companies, coach, and a man of faith and family, Josh is hell-bent, hell-bent on helping others lead a life of exceptional impact, influence, and faith. Through his speaking, coaching, and organizations, Josh motivates, advises, and leads others to reach their potential in business and life. You'll know it's all true if you've listened to part one. And so I want to thank Josh Kalinowski for coming back on the Roundtable podcast for part two. Josh, welcome. My honor, my man. Thanks for having me on again, brother. No, no. uh, My pleasure. And, um, you know, we really enjoyed part one of, of your segment. And... For those that didn't hear uh, part one, if you wouldn't mind just kind of giving us your five tenets of the five Fs, just to give a little bit of background. You bet. Uh, So we start with faith, family, fitness, finance, and our future. I love it. I love it. So we're going to start with the first question of part two, and we're going to go to Dude Buddy, the nightcap OG. Scott Bossman. Scott, what is your question for Josh? Well, I have two questions, but first I want to say to Josh, uh, we have a couple of things in common because I'm from South Dakota, grew up in South Dakota, your, your neighbor to the east there. Uh-huh. And I went to a small uh, college in Iowa, uh, Luther College. So, um, but anyway, uh, and then another thing is uh, I was actually talking to my uncle about you because he's a diehard baseball fan. He's been a season ticket holder of the Colorado Rockies for 30 years And I said, hey, do you know Josh Kalinowski? And he's like, who, this guy? And he sends me three pictures of three (laughs) of your minor league baseball cards, which I think I should share here, Mark, if I can. Yeah, Um, that'd be great. But uh, so, yeah, he, you're, you're my uncle's albums, which is pretty cool. Very cool. (laughs) Very cool. But uh, I, so I have two questions for you. One is baseball related. Who's the toughest hitter you ever faced? And the second is, um, you faced a lot of adversity uh, in, you know, you, you, you had basically season ending injuries and surgeries. Right. And I'm curious to know, how do you leave the pain behind, whether it's physical pain, emotional pain? Um, and I think that has a little bit to do with our business because we have a lot of people, maybe, maybe they're coming to us. They've had some failures in their past, business failures, personal mm-hmm. failures. Uh, they, they've had some upheaval in their lives because of, you know, financial crises, whatever. Yeah. Mike and I on, on our nightcap, we talk about leaving the emotion out of the motion. So like, yeah. are, are there ways that you do that? How do you leave the pain behind the, the emotion behind to move forward um, to, to reach your goals? You bet my man. Uh, yes. I most certainly can answer that for sure. Uh, there was a, there was a first question before that. I'm trying to remember what did you have. Toughest hitter, toughest hitter you ever faced. So, um, I had the pleasure in my career as I was, as I was going through the minor leagues, um, and, and kind of being a, you know, a top prospect and, and really being, you know, seen as, um, as, as a pitcher that was going to be with the Colorado Rockies on the major league level, went to big, big league screen training a number of times and, and had some just um, amazing experiences. And, um, one that I, I will tell you, this is kind of interesting. Um, I didn't remember this moment for about five years afterwards until I was reflecting on, you know, certain things about my career and aspects, because, you know, once again, I kind of went through a dark time. I turned my back baseball, turned its back on me. So then I turned my back on baseball and it was like that, it was like that nasty divorce, right. Where nobody's speaking to each other. And you just like, you, you want to forget everything that had happened in the past. Well, finally, after some healing, I started looking back there and I remember facing Barry Bonds. I remember specifically because it was the year that he broke the home run record. And I had, I was, uh, it was a, it was a, a two and two count. 
And I had, I struck him out oh and my gosh. well, no, no, no. Wow. I struck him out in my mind. The umpire didn't call it a strike. Oh no. The black. And I'm like, Oh, this is not good. <laughs> so <laughs> I said, you know, I'm not walking him. I'm not walking. You know, this is before he was the all time home run leader. Right. And I said, all right, uh, I'm, I'm just going to challenge him. Here we go. And he laced a line drive that would have taken my head off. It would have been anywhere near me because I couldn't have reacted so as fast uh, over the second baseman. And he got a single. And all I can tell people is that he didn't hit home run number one off of me. So I was really proud of that moment, but he was a beast. And uh, I know you, un unfortunately, because of TV, you don't realize how big some of these human beings are like the Jose Canseco's and the Mark McGuire's of the world. Like Barry Bonds was a big dude. Uh, he was sitting on, he was standing on uh, first base with Todd Helton and that's a big man right there. So uh, toughest hitter that I've ever been able to face was, was Barry Bonds. Very cool. Thank you for uh, that. Okay. So number two, I think the question for what I'm, what I'm understanding is like, how did I overcome the failure? What does that look like? What is one of the processes to do that? Yeah. How do you leave the physical pain, the emotional pain behind from, from the adversity like that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, that is the biggest thing that's taken me 13 years to truly, really try to figure out. And I will say, first of all, it is a journey. Um, I wish it could be just be one magic pill that you take or one question that you can answer. And then all of a sudden you're completely healed and you have no, you know, those wounds are uh, mended and, and you can move on. But, uh, and, and so it, but it's not, so it's not easy like that. It's just kind of like, well, how do you become a millionaire? Well, it's not one step, right? It's multiple steps that you have to repeat over and over again. Um, healing from those moments of uh, defeat and despair and loss and angst and setbacks, I will tell you, I think the biggest thing that made the most improvement for me um, and really allowed me to start to continue to grow as a uh, young man is the ability to forgive myself. Um, we blame ourselves a lot. We are the hardest critics of ourselves. You have a failed marriage. You're not blaming your spouse. You're probably blaming yourself and all the moments and all the things that you did that caused it. Um, you go through bankruptcy. You're most certainly blaming yourself for the bad decisions that you made and your inability to fix the problem. Um, you know, you have a son or a daughter that uh, makes some really bad decisions. Well, you probably blame yourself because you didn't have more guidance over them and you didn't have more control on helping them make better decisions. Um, and so when we can learn to forgive ourselves, understand that we need to give ourselves more grace than we give other people. Then you start to this belief in yourself. And, you know, one of the things we talked about, our, our biggest thing is that, that faith, that faith aspect of it. Well, when you have faith in yourself, it means that you have confidence in yourself. You start to believe in yourself, even when you maybe feel like the world is doubting you. And you can only have faith in yourself if you've been able to forgive yourself, forgive yourself of the past discretions, the past issues that you've committed in, in your life. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to continue to make mistakes. And if you live in the past, you're missing everything that the future has to offer. I love awesome. it. Well said. Thank you. I love it. I love it. Um, the technician, Eric Peterson. What's your question? Yeah, Josh, good to meet you. Um, so in the intro, Mark, you talked about Josh having, uh, I think it was seven different businesses. And eight different businesses mm -hmm. i'm he's sure the everybody he's the is Marcus wondering of wyoming what are all these businesses we've talked about being a realtor being a, a coach so talk to us about this businesses and and maybe you know why so many different things uh one because i'm schizophrenic <laughs> <laughs> and for the longest time, I, I would say, you know, honestly, the, the reason why a lot of these started was because I was still searching for who I wanted to become when I grew up, you know, like I'd get an interest. Oh, I want to be in that industry. That looks really good. That sounds fun. And I found somebody that was passionate about it. And so we partnered up and we began to create something. Um, I love the creation part of things. I love sitting down and working through challenges and overcoming like, well, how do we resolve them? How do we help people um, in those challenges that they are faced with? So uh, the hub, if you think of a wheel, really what it looks like is this, is that the hub of our, of our, um, our businesses revolve around real estate. 
And so I've got a residential side, which is one entity. Um, and we're in two different locations. We have a commercial side, which is another entity as well too. So there's really two of our businesses. Um, we have property management as well too. So that's a separate entity. It's not a part of, cause we're with a national firm on the, on the, uh, the real estate side of it, but our property management is kind of locally owned in a sense. Um, and that's, uh, and that just is all multifamily and single family residential properties. Um, and we're not getting into the commercial yet. Um, then we also have um, our a media company. What ended up happening is that as we continue to grow a lot of these companies, we, we were looking at, well, a big portion of that needs to we need to be on social media. We need to, we need to be on, um, on other platforms in order to make sure that our message gets out there. And as you, we all know is that, you know, hiring a professional media company is tremendously expensive. And what we found ourselves is going, man, we're not like, we're not a big corporation in a sense. We're not the, um, you know, we're not the government and we're most certainly not like the hospital, which we have these outra- outrageous budgets that we can afford to spend on media. So, we just created it. We hired the right staffing. We found people that were passionate about it. And uh, we created a media company that was just, all we do is internal stuff within the organizations. Um, And then of course we have, oh, and then this was kind of a loop one. We have uh, roofing. Um, My father, when he was doing master's construction, I always told him we needed to get into roofing because I'm in real estate and I can't tell you how many roofs we repair every, every month and, and replace every year. And, uh, we live in a very harsh climate as well too. So there's wind damage, there's hail damage, there's, you know, you name it. Um, and so we had an opportunity, um, to partner with some other people. And, uh, now we, now we own that entity itself, but you can see like every one of the businesses that I have, um, really complement each other. Um, They feed each other and they really are very inner, inner resourceful in a sense. Um, And then we built, we, we, we got, we bought this new building and one of them, uh, one of the things here is that we were able to open up our own fitness center. And that is really important because it goes back to those foundational pieces. And we know that being in real estate or just being in any industry, um, we can be very obsessive about that. And for me, I wanted to make sure that people had that, um, that, that place that they could go to just get away from the chaos of the business. Right. And for me, fitness has always been that aspect for me. It's where I have my greatest thoughts that come about because I'm doing something hard and all that pops in and I can clear my mind. And so, um, we have a fitness center as well, too. Obviously we have some coaching. Uh, so, so I have two different kind of coaching platforms that we do. Um, and then we have man-made, which is really my passion project. If I could, if you told me right now today, Hey, Josh, you can only do one thing. It would be my organization that we have with Man Made. And uh, so that's been our biggest one. That's the one that we're really working on developing. And we've got some great events that we host throughout the year for, for men and then one for men and their sons. So, Josh, I, I want to talk about Man Made because we, we're in a, a mastermind uh, group together that's focused on uh, building up to 200, over 200% of your, your passive income. Yeah. Um, is, is really more the focus. And it's a great group of guys and um, led by, you know, Russ and Joey, uh, Russ Morgan, Joey Murray of Wealth yeah. Wall Street. And we should actually have a, a link to that as well for those people that would want to apply for that, to that group. But I remember talking to you and meeting you at the event in Nashville for the first time. And you started talking to me about man-made and you lit up mm-hmm. and you know, it's one of those those times when, um, you know, when you meet from somebody for the first time, you really feel connected to them. You don't know anything about them, but like when they're that passionate about what they're talking about, you're like, oh man, I want to join this group. Mm-hmm. And so, tell us uh, a little bit about the mission of Man Made and and what, what what why you're so passionate about it. Yeah, well, the Man Made is really a, it's a, it's a network of ambitious men that give a exclamation about life. <laughs> so, so insert poop emoji <laughs> right there. Right? right. Uh, you know, really at the end of the day, what was, what was happening is that, um, I was searching for my tribe again, I was done with baseball. Um, and I didn't have that group of other men that were going to battle with me to go and accomplish something great in my life. 
And I looked for other organizations. I was searching for other things. I didn't want, you know, obviously I have a, a real, you know, I have a faith background, but I didn't want a glorified book study and I didn't want a Bible study. And I didn't, you know, they didn't want this kumbaya, let's go hold hands and sing, you know, like that was like, no, that's not for me. But at the end of the day, I also didn't want a locker room too, where, you know, you're, you're telling, you know, as men, you know, we're telling inappropriate jokes and we're more focused on, um, the, the things that we were doing that were destroying our marriage and stuff. I didn't want those things. Right. And so I wanted a network of men that were three-dimensional, right. That they were out there pursuing all aspects of their life. We have the five foundations, but really what it comes down to is like, you know, business, health, and life in a sense. Right. And so without being able to plant myself into something that existed, um, it came very apparent that we had to kind of create this. And so I've partnered with a couple of really, really, really amazing men um, that are ambitious in their life. One of them, uh, Jimmy Clager, who's a uh, 25, uh, 20 year um, vet and uh, former, we don't say former, but he was a ranger uh, and just a complete badass of a man and just a great dude. And so um, we wanted to create events for men to come together. And so we have three events really that we've created. One is called Alpha Camp. So this is an opportunity for men um, to be able to just get themselves away for the weekend, right? And do some amazing things, maybe some bucket list things that they would just never in a million years think they'd want to do or make the effort to do it, right? And then being around other men as well too, and maybe challenging themselves. We do a hit workout. Um, we, you know, we 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 drink great whiskey, we smoke some cigars, we have great conversations. And we create amazing opportunities for men to just talk about life and how they're really doing. And uh, just a fun, fun time. You know, for those that of us that are really going through a hardship in life, a divorce, maybe another chapter in life, maybe they're taking that big, big step. Um, we've got what's called the awakening. And sometimes, you know what, guys, like we just need to get our ass kicked. Like sometimes we just literally need to go out there and feel the burn of an exhaustive day. We, I mean, as many of us know, we live in a concrete jungle for the most part. We're not exposed to the wilderness. We're not doing stuff out in nature. And so it's a great opportunity for people to come to Wyoming. They get in the mountains. They see the stars for the first time. They hear the silence, which is deafening, right? And they do physically hard, mentally hard, emotionally hard things that really open up their greater purpose in why they're doing what they're doing. And then of course, our last one is uh, what I love is our core of discovery. It's called a rite of passage for young boys and fathers. And we know that men have this, we think it's an op, we, we think it's a responsibility to raise our children, but what at the end of the day, it's really truly about an opportunity that we've been given. And we don't know how long that opportunity is going to last, right? And so we want to make the greatest impact that we can on our children's lives. And one of the things that as men is we want to help our boys become men. But we don't know when that is. When is that rite of passage? You know, and I continue. Is it when they turn 16 and they can drive a car? Is it when they graduate high school? Is it when they have sex for the first time, get married, have a child? Like, like when is that rite of passage given to that young boy? And uh, this event helps fathers be that person to step in line to say, today, you become one step closer to being a man. And so it's a fun event. It's an amazing event. It's an opportunity for men to bond with their boys and for their boys to, to bond with their fathers as well. Wow. I, I, I love it. And uh, I know all, all the men on this podcast are like fired up. I can just see it on their faces. And Tria is like, look, I'm one of the boys. I should, <laughs> and I have Tria. four of them. So yes, yes, four yeah. of them. great. <laughs> yeah. And uh, her husband, Landon, it would be, you know, it's just a phenomenal guy. He, he, he would, he would eat this stuff up. The only problem with Landon is that he's as athletic as you. So it's a good thing. <laughs> you know, someone like me is like, Oh no. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll just make him put the weighted vest on. So that always, that always levels the playing field right Absolutely. there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you guys are, you know, get, getting like a rucksack workout in and like in like some wilderness. I'm like, uh, where's the, uh, where's this, there's a steam room. Yes, that, exactly. That, that's, that's, that's where I want to sweat. Yep. <laughs> that's awesome. Love it. So, uh, I don't know if you saw, but Scott Boston put up your pictures from the Rockies. Oh, excellent. That's awesome. Uh, it's, it's so cool. And you, wait, you look so young. It's crazy. 
Ah, yeah, yeah. That was a, a those, those were a few years ago, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, yeah. So, um, if anyone does, does anybody have a last question for JK? I've got one. If you guys don't, before we go to our tip of the week. All right, I'll take it. So my last and, and your mentorship these these past two podcasts have been tremendously tremendously valuable. My my question is, I want to get back to the root of of the JK wisdom, mm. which I think would be your father. Mm. What has been the best advice your dad has ever given to you and has made the most impact on your life? Oh man. Oof. Your guys' questions have been hard, but this one might be the hardest right there. Um I would tell you, uh, my father has, I've been so fortunate. My father has been my best friend growing up and we went through some hard times, no doubt about it, but he never left my side. Right. He never, um, he never gave up on me, even when there were times where I kind of gave up on myself or even on us in a sense. Right. Um, I think the thing that my father, I don't know if he necessarily said this, but what he has instilled in me is, is really this ability to know that to know who I am and whose I am. Um, especially when you go through challenges, you, uh, you don't feel worthy. You know, you don't feel worthy of uh, others, people's appreciation or love, or you don't feel worthy of uh, a future success. Um, and he's always brought me back to that, that, my failures do not define me. They become, you know, as we say, your tests become your testimony or your mess becomes your message. And he, um, he's always brought me back to center. And I have, I'm so appreciative of that. And if there's, if there's one thing that I want that I consistently, consistently talk to my boys about my, and my girls about is to know who they are and whose they are. I love that. Who they are and whose they are. Yeah. Well, powerful. yeah, really, really powerful. And thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we get to the tip of the week, it's, it's hard to sort of transition into uh, a plug, but JK, as you know, I'm shameless. <laughs> Bring it. Love it. <laughs> so today's podcast is sponsored by flight school. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Start building up that passive income quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. It's going to take 16 weeks and that flight school tuition is not going to cost you a thing guaranteed. Just show us your work. You're going to make back that investment 180 days or less. Learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training, the landgeek.com forward slash training. If you are getting value from this, let us know, follow, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review. Support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free a signed copy of Dirt Rich. JK, again, your mentorship has been invaluable, but I'm going to put you on the spot one last time. Yeah. What is your tip of the week? A website, a resource, a book, something yeah. else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? You bet, man. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, I know that you have a lot of high achievers that listen to, I know there's a lot of high achievers that I'm just looking at on the screen right here. <clears throat> and it's so important for us to have a daily routine or something that we need to do consistently in our life. And so what I would tell everybody is that just make sure you take your daily pill. And the pill of course is an acronym for something that you can do just four things that you can do on a daily basis. And I'd be happy to give you the resources for this here, Mark, as well too, for your audience every day. You want to do something painful every day. And for me, just as an example, it's getting in that stinking ice barrel bath. That's about 40 degrees because I know that if I can tackle something hard in the morning, nothing can happen to me the rest of the day that I can't take on. Right. And especially as a business owner, or as we've talked about entrepreneur, we know that there's going to be something that's going to be hard. So painful, intentional, what is it intentionally that you're going to do that day that's going to help move your business forward or something that's important to you forward? Do something every single day that you're lazy at, right? Something that you just avoid, 
that you hope somebody else is going to do. But you know, at the end of the day, if you did it, it would make life easier for them and you would be happy that you got it done. And then every day, make sure that you do something that you love. What is it that you love to do? And make sure you have an opportunity to do that. So take the pill every single day, painful, intentional, lazy, and love. Well, I, I can tell you as you're talking right now, I know most of the people on the round table, they're taking their pill every single day, including Mike Zano. Mike, tell, tell JK what you do. Yeah, I do the uh, ice spiral as well. Yeah, I've been doing that. And it's, uh, so it's a challenge probably like you because in New England, it's uh, it's not exactly easy in the middle of a blizzard to be out there doing a, well, that's but, exactly. uh, It's awesome. Life-changing, actually. You what? It's life-changing, I think, for real. It is. Absolutely. Well, I mean, there's health benefits to it. You know, I mean, here's the thing is that the, the health benefits to it are just an, a loan that you should be doing it for that reason. But then when you get the mental benefits to it, it just, can, it just stacks on it. And it's a really amazing experience that you should really put into your daily routine. Agreed. But the cold shower is not enough in Phoenix. It's uncomfortable. I don't know how painful. I tell you what, I think the ice barrel is actually better. It is actually easier to do than the cold showers. Because if you think about it, your whole body's going numb when you're in that shower, like just your front is numb. And then you got to rotate and get the back numb. And that's like starting over at zero again. And so <laughs> yeah. Every time that you move, you're starting over at zero. So you're just better getting all the way in brother. <laughs> all right, fine. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I, no, yeah. I, I, yeah. Fine. I'm sold. That'll be my, my painful thing. Love sure. it. I, I love it. I love um, it. Yeah. Uh, again, I want to uh, thank you again for taking so much time, JK. Uh, it has been such a pleasure, such an honor. And um, if you want to learn more about Josh Kalinowski, the best place to go is joshkalinowski.com. Again, we will have a link to his, sw- his site. Check out the book, Strike Three. And certainly uh, if you are a man, Check out uh, Josh's group, Man Made. Absolutely. And Josh, we'll have a, a link to that. What's that? What's that website? Yeah. So if you go to man-made.org, you'll find it there. We've got a private network as well, too, of guys uh, free of charge. You just have to make an application in there. Prove, you know, just say that you are a man because it is a man's group. So uh, sorry. Sorry, lady. I, as much as we love you. Uh, we, we, you know, it's just for men. Um, and then also I was going to say this too, you know, follow me on Instagram. Uh, I would love to inter- interact and engage with everybody. I do a drive time every morning at eight 30. So at the beginning of my day, um, I do 15 minutes. I give you 15 minutes of what I'm thinking about the questions. Maybe I'm asking myself the challenges that I'm facing my, within myself. Uh, and it's just a great way to connect with people and see how they're doing and anything that I can do to assist on my end. I'm always, always there for you. I love it. Last question, JK, is there anything I should have asked or we should have asked collectively that we didn't ask? Most people right now are asking me, when is the major league baseball lockout going to stop? And I will tell you this, they're all greedy right now and it ain't going to stop anytime soon. So there's a lot of money on the line. Unfortunately, the owners felt like they got to take an advantage the last time. And I don't think that they're going to be moving ground much at all. So I hate to say it. I love the sport. I hate the politics of it. And we as the we as fans are paying the price for this, unfortunately. Um, but I think we're running for a long haul on this. And um, but just don't give up on the sport. It's still, I think, the greatest, I think it's the greatest, it's America's greatest pastime, but I think it's still the greatest sport out there because you don't have to be six two or six four and two hundred and forty pounds to make it to the major leagues. I love it. I love it. Well, brother, uh, this was great. Thank you again. All right, are we all ready to do this. One, two. Three, let freedom freedom ring. ring. All right. Fantastic. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.